You know, folks, I've come to realize something. We are privileged to be living through what I think might be another personal computer revolution. And no, I ain't talking about cell phones or dash-mounted navigation systems, home theaters, tablets, or any of that consumer junk. That ain't real computing. No, there's a new dawn breaking, and the sun cresting up over the hill is made up of the diverse array of single-board personal computers. With their integrated and accessible general-purpose I.O., they bridge the gap between a simple microcontroller and a PC to become something that's almost a new category of devices. And in so doing, they've taken the field of integrated computing right down to the hobbyist level, to folks like you and me, the unwashed plebeian masses. And it's resulted in an explosion of projects. Gaming stations, ad scrubbers, media centers, pirate boxes, and of course, the ever-popular Internet of Things doodads. Scrolling Shapeways, you can find a million and one enclosures for these things, all for different kinds of applications. Looking at all these great projects got me excited, and I decided to revisit a project I've been thinking about for about the past 10 years. Yeah, I've been working on this for a while with little progress, but I think I finally made some headway. Let me show you where I'm at. The TR-108 Environmental Tricorder. Light, extensible, and easily disassembled and serviced in the field. Capable of detecting a wide range of environmental attributes, making it perfect for any short-duration Class M away missions. Don't waste time with conventional sensory equipment. The TR-108 fits perfectly into any Starship equipment locker. The TR-108 is great for meteorological surveys, magnetic interference analysis, geophysical and spatial mapping, and much, much more. The 108's non-duotronic, conventional architecture means you won't taint undeveloped cultures with advanced technology. And the TR-108 tricorder employs a modular design. So whether you have a star-based science lab or just stone knives and bearskins at your disposal, replacing damaged or faulty components is a snap. Order yours today. Send subspace messages to Godstar Interplanetary, Section 32, Level 47, Daystrom Institute, Rigel 3, Rigel System. Hailing frequencies are open. Order yours today. Yes, this is my newest project, the TR-108, and I think now you probably have a good idea of what it's about. On the surface, it's really just a Raspberry Pi case, but there's a twist. Using it, I can read the ambient temperature of a room, the humidity, barometric pressure, and in addition, it can also measure acceleration, rotational motion, and magnetic field strength. It's probably the most feature-complete electronics project I've worked towards, and it's built of mostly off-the-shelf components. The software governing it also represents my first attempt at a mostly complete graphical program. Full disclosure though, there are some glaring emissions, like sounds. It just turned out to be too difficult to integrate them in the timeline I had, so I've left that maybe for a future upgrade. But with that in mind, here's a breakdown of what I did. So the first thing I did was ponder the enclosure. I'm a TNG guy, born and raised. I always loved the TNG tricorder, but they're a pretty small device. I'm sure someone with skills could cram a screen, pie, and all the necessary bits into one of these, but I wasn't that guy. So I set out looking for a shell of the TOS tricorder. It's a little bit bigger, has a lot more room to breathe. Now there's a lot of toys and prop replicas out there of this device. Playmates made one back in the 90s, but as it was made for children, and not to the scale of the real prop, it was just a tad too small for my liking. Luckily, Diamond Select makes a great toy of the original tricorder, and three different models even. Looks perfect. And with that in hand, I could start figuring out my internal components. 
Getting it apart was a challenge, and I quickly found myself running blind, into pieces that had been glued shut. I was weary of forcing things apart I couldn't see, I, I didn't want to snap something. Luckily, I found a Hackaday journal for someone doing this exact same project, who had some nice photos of the disassembly which helped me plan my attack. I managed to get it apart without serious damage, but because the display module is glued shut, I ended up having to crack some standoffs. I used a rotary tool to trim quite a bit of the plastic, and remove and reattach elements to the front of the enclosure using my new favorite material, epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part modeling putty that cures super hard. It's ideal for bonding parts in a nearly permanent way. It doesn't look very pretty here, but it can be machined, sanded, or even painted once cured. I got really familiar with this material by turning a cheap toy gun into a Blade Runner blaster replica for Halloween last year. Most of this project relies pretty heavily on it, and I probably couldn't have completed it otherwise. I wanted to make the tricorder as modular as possible, and since the whole toy seems to center around this uh, back panel, I decided it would make sense to create a circuit backplane that all the components would attach to, and then affix that backplane to this panel. Doing this reduced complexity, and it allowed me to make better use of space. Then once I had it apart, I took some calipers and I started making a basic dimension drawing to sort out my internal components and placement, just to make sure everything would fit properly. With the basic framework decided, I needed to start thinking about components, and the first thing I wanted to think about was the CPU. Now at first I wanted to use a Pi 3 or a standard Pi 2 or whatever, but the margins would be very tight and you'd need to cut away most of the enclosure, which didn't really work for me. So the Pi 0 seemed ideal, and it even fits the enclosure perfectly. I decided to use a stacking header so that when I installed it into the tricorder, I could still attach wires to the GPIO if I wanted to add functionality later. Now these little dudes can be difficult to source, and I've only ever been able to buy one at a time when I can even find them. This project was actually brought to a standstill after I fried a Pi Zero during construction, and I had to wait for retailers to get more in stock. But once they did, I was able to carry on thanks to the modular nature of my design. I guess nobody ever said $10 computers would be an abundant resource. Obviously it's going to need a display, and this was the most nerve-wracking part. Displays are expensive, and one this small especially so, but the other problem is getting it to fit. Luckily, like I said, I found this Hackaday journal for someone who had this exact same idea a few years back. They were kind enough to test a screen that seemed the right size, and they shared photos. The screen they selected is a composite screen, which means the picture won't be great, but at this resolution I don't really care. The added benefit is, unlike other TFT screens of this size, I won't have to mess with the kernel to use the frame buffer, and there's a handy little pin on the Pi Zero for this too. I was so stoked that this awesome person shared this information because honestly, I could have spun my wheels for a while trying to source a screen that worked. Even if this one is just a tad tight, it works. At first I played with the idea of just having this be a display piece that sat on a shelf. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that if I was really going to all this trouble, this tricorder needed to be mobile, which meant it needed a battery. I found this one at Adafruit, it's only 2200 milliamp hours, but it's nice and small, and if you're willing to make alterations, you can remove the casing and make it even more compact. It's just a simple 18650 battery in a charging circuit. You could probably make something like this with off-the-shelf eBay purchases, but I figured in the interest of saving time I'd grab this. I can always replace it with something better. I haven't tested its endurance with screen on, but I'd wager it's a couple of hours at least. I still wanted the option of leaving it as a display piece, so I added a micro USB port on the bottom, and integrated a dip switch to let me select either battery or mains power sources. I can charge the battery without opening up the enclosure by toggling the third switch. Now, I could have just stopped here. I could have just crammed the Pi, the battery, and the screen in there and called it a day. But I couldn't shake the feeling there was something missing. A tricorder is a device that has purpose, to collect information and relate it to the user. This is not something outside the realms of possibility for a modern build like this. I thought maybe I could buy a bunch of those sensor ICs and build my own sensor palette, but I opted to get this thing, the Sense Hat. It's a Raspberry Pi add-on board, originally called the Astro Pi, that was actually designed to perform science experiments in space written by students in the UK. 
It contains a humble collection of environmental sensors, specifically a barometer, thermometer, hygrometer, magnetometer, accelerometer, and a gyroscope. It also includes this stylish 8x8 LED matrix, which I didn't think I had much use for, but ended up replacing the motorized moir I had to remove. As it happens, a sense hat actually flew into space in 2015, which makes this component an honest-to-goodness piece of aerospace technology. How could I not include one in my pie quarter? But I like the idea that if years down the line I wanted to revisit or revise this project, replace a broken or faulty component, or even if I just wanted to salvage the parts, that I would be able to with a minimum of hassle. So to me that meant everything had to connect via headers. Now headers are hardly robust, but they allow you to quickly assemble components. Once connected, I wanted everything to connect via a backplane or motherboard, just like a standard desktop computer. I designed a pretty good backplane that I thought would accomplish this job perfectly, but before I sent the design out to be fabricated, I figured maybe it would be a good idea to build a prototype. And it's a good thing too, because my initial design had many flaws that I was only able to correct through trial and error. Now I pause to show off my prototype backplane here because it's admittedly very untidy. But I managed to get it all together here. You can see the sense hat and the Pi occupy different areas of the board instead of being directly attached. This is in part a space issue, but it's also an attempt to move the temperature sensor away from the zero, which can get warm in operation and cause erroneous ambient temperature measurements. I've used some pretty dirty techniques to break out the GPIOs I'll need for the control panel, and they're accessible via this 90 degree header. For the control panel, I decided to keep the internal circuitry as simple as possible, which meant all the current limiting resistors or associated components would be on the back plane, as opposed to being crammed into the display module. It's not too pretty, but I think it turned out pretty good. I'm a little sad it's over, actually. There's nothing like a good project to occupy the mind. And I think the part I'm proudest of is how I used a lot of epoxy sculpt to reinforce areas where I needed it and affix components non-permanently. Like for instance, the frame for this LCD was achieved by encasing the screen component in plastic wrap and then applying epoxy sculpt around it at the desired location. Now usually it's suggested you use petroleum jelly or something similar to keep the sculpt from bonding to things. But I needed to keep the screen clean, and this worked a treat. The sculpt adhered to the plastic panel and to itself, but not to the screen. I set it aside with lots of tape to maintain pressure, and once cured, I was able to slide the screen out with some coaxing. I removed the plastic wrap from the screen, and now it slid in and out easily. Thanks to the small seams in the component, it even clicks into place. Now this technique allowed me to do lots of stuff, like the battery holder and the screw mounts for the back plane as well. The display module was the most difficult and time-consuming aspect. There wasn't much room and I needed to pack a TFT display, three LEDs, three buttons into that small space. I had to permanently install the LEDs, which was a hard decision given their consumable nature, but I think I could pull this block off if need be. So I had my basic hardware done. The tricorder was pretty much complete. And I knew that this project would be pointless if when you flipped that screen up, you weren't presented with a nice TOS style display. In the early phases of this project, I toyed with the idea of having a loop of a piece of Trek video, but after adding the sense hat to the plan, it became important that the Pi quarter could translate the relevant sensor data in a quickly readable way. Now, a big inspiration in my endeavor was a project I encountered a little while back by Toby Kurian. It's a pretty awesome LCARS home automation interface written in Python using Pygame. Toby released his project on GitHub, so I was able to go through it and get some ideas about how the project worked. Most notable to me was Toby's use of Pygame, a library for Python that provides a lot of graphical components for drawing things on screen. This is great, because as I'm getting more familiar and comfortable with Python, collecting and parsing data wasn't a problem, but displaying it was at first challenging. I knew I could use Pygame to create some simple animations and displays. I eventually decided to go with this simple design, which is as close to the screen burn-in from Plato's stepchildren as I could get it. Now you can go and take a look at my entire program at the GitHub link in the description, but the basic idea is, the program will draw a picture I made to the background. Then the program queries sensor data from the sense hat, 
It parses it, translates it properly, puts a block of text on screen representing that data, then it translates that data into position values for the sliders and puts those on the screens. All the while, the program is monitoring for keyboard presses, button inputs, and driving the three LEDs. At present, there are three very rudimentary modes. The first simply displays our data with these sliders. The second puts it into a graph so you can see trends. And the third plays this lovely homage to the city on the edge of forever. Check it out. If you'd like to try this program on your computer, I've included a demo version at the GitHub link that pulls your computer's vitals and displays those, just to help you see how the program would run. Despite this being my first real Pi game endeavor, this is also the first time I've used object-oriented programming. Now, object-oriented programming eluded me for a long time, and I think I'm finally starting to get it. And I've kept my program pretty modular, so in the future it's trivial if I want to add more functionality. Even though the hardware is done, this project's still far from complete. Growing up, I wasn't sure of many things, but I knew this. The future was bright, and it would look like Star Trek. I wasn't far off. Just take a look at the last 50 years. Room-sized leviathans using relays and tube valves to pocketable single board computers. We have devices that are powers of magnitude faster and more capable than their predecessors. I was inspired in my youth by fantastical devices like the tricorder. We're not all the way there yet, but it's really starting to feel like we're living in the future. Today, there are many trying to chase the dream of a real working tricorder. From homebrew endeavors like the Tricorder Project to large-scale competitions like the Tricorder X Prize. But it's nice to be able to have my own little version to tool around with. You know, I can close the lid and leave it somewhere, just logging data, and then later review that data to see if there's been any significant changes. I'd say this project was a remarkable journey for me, and it's given me the confidence to set my sights on even bigger ones. But I think for now, I'll grab my communicator, my phaser, and of course, my trusty tricorder, and go on some away missions of my own. If you are inspired by this and you want to try your hand at making your own tricorder, or adapting things I did here, I invite you to check out the GitHub for this project at the link below. You'll find all the software as well as my dimension drawings, my circuit design, anything else I could think of that might be useful to help you sort this stuff out. So long.